CWI prep course, radiographic testing, RT, module 10, part 11. Learning objectives. In this module, we're going to touch base on RT theory, radiographic testing theory, basic principles of RT, x-ray equipment, and what a shim stock is. Radiographic testing provides a non-destructive method of inspecting the internal continuity of a specimen. It is truly a modern miracle that allows us to see through a piece of steel or almost any other material. Even though radiography can be relatively expensive and may involve extensive safety considerations, its uniqueness and applicability find it in wide use in manufacturing, research, and in medical diagnostics and therapy. Although a study of radiographic testing might include only x-rays and their uses, this chapter includes both natural and artificial radiation sources with coverage of x-ray, gamma, and neutron radiography. This is from the Military Handbook of Radiographic Testing. Radiographic inspection, RT, is a method of inspecting weldments by the use of rays that penetrate through welds. X and gamma radiation are the two types of wave used for this process. There are also two ways to view x-rays. The first and oldest method is on film. The x-rays pass through the weld and onto a sensitized film that is in direct contact with the back of the weld. When the film is developed, gas pockets, slag inclusions, cracks, or pore penetration will be visible on the film. The second method is using a computer. Instead of exposing film a computer x-ray digitizes the radiation with use of sensors. You may have been exposed to this type of x-ray at your dentist. The advantage of digitized images is that the computer can analyze the image and help the inspector identify any defects, making the inspection more accurate. Because of the danger of these rays, only qualified personnel are authorized to perform these tests. The information depicted in a radiograph is obtained by virtue of density differences brought about by differential absorption of the radiation. These density differences, unless gross in nature, must be oriented parallel to the direction in which the radiation is traveling. Discontinuities of small volumes, such as lamellar flaws, will often be undetected because they do not present a sufficient density differential to the radiation. The very nature of a delamination precludes their ready detection, and radiographic inspection is seldom used to locate this type of flaw. A specimen can be too thick to penetrate. As material thickness is increased, the time required to obtain sufficient information on the film also increases. For a given energy, penetrating power, of X or gamma radiation, there exists an economic maximum thickness beyond which radiography is not feasible. If the cost is warranted, radiographic equipment of higher energy potential could be obtained. Such costs increase markedly because of the barriers required to protect personnel from the harmful effects of the radiation as well as the basic cost of larger equipment. To get useful industrial radiation, for industrial radiography, there's a couple of different methods. You can use an X-ray um, generator, an X-ray tube to give you X-rays, which are generally used on steel through three quarters of an inch. And then you can have gamma rays, which are um, produced by radioactive materials like iridium-192 or cobalt-60. Iridium-192 is used for three quarter of an inch to three inch steel and then cobalt-60 is two inch to six inch steel. There are some other ones that we touch base on in later slides just to let you know that they're out there. Um, but this gives you a general idea on the, the penetrating power of different forms of radiation. Alpha radiation will go through, it's stopped by a piece of paper. Beta radiation is stopped by your the thickness of your hand. Medical x-rays will go through your hand and through the wood and then gamma radiation will go through your hand, the wood, and be stopped by the concrete. And then neutron radiation has significantly more um, penetrating power. This is just to give you a general idea of the differences in the amount of energy involved with the different um, forms of radiation. 
Basic principles of RT. Radiographic testing involves three basic concepts. First, there must be a beam of radiant energy that can penetrate a specimen. Second, the beam must be selectively attenuated by the variables of the specimen as penetration occurs. Last, the results of the selective attenuation must be detected and or displayed. Therefore, we will study penetrating radiation beams, their attenuations due to the absorption characteristics of materials, and present-day detection and display systems. I tried to break this down on my own, but I'm just going to the NRC's website to explain this. What is radiography? It is a term used to describe using gamma rays or x-rays to inspect the structure of some large dense material. Although x-ray machines may be used for this, they are limited by their need for an electrical source, and because x-rays can only penetrate certain materials, a radiography device, sometimes referred to as a radiography camera, uses sealed sources that emit gamma radiation that can penetrate a very dense material, such as metal. Radiography devices can be used without electricity and are portable, making them handy to use at work sites. Because a radiography source, while small in size, emits gamma radiation that can penetrate several inches of metal, it must be stored in its shielded container when not in use. When a weld needs to be inspected, a long tube is connected to the device that allows the source to travel to the location that needs to be inspected. A long drive cable also is attached to the other end of the device. This allows the radiographer performing the inspection to stand far away from the radiation source during the inspection. Typically, the source is in the guide tube only a few seconds to a few minutes, depending on what is being inspected. Radiography is used to inspect welds on pipes for oil rigs, large tanks that hold gasoline, airplane engines, and other large metal structures. So, Basically, there's two different ways that you can create. You could create X-rays or you can create gamma rays. And the gamma rays are created by a chunk of radioactive material. And the radioactive material is put into a what they call a camera. And then the source, you add a tube to it. When you're out in the field and you need to shoot a shoot a weld do radiography on the weld, you crank out the source, it goes out to where you need it, um, your film is exposed for X amount of seconds or minutes, you crank the source back in, you're good. If you're using x-rays, it's just like going to the dentist or going to the doctor where they x-ray your leg. It's just a machine that creates x-ray radiation, it goes through the material, your teeth, your leg, a weld, and then the film is on the other side of whatever is being x-rayed, and that's how the system works. But So we're going to talk about a couple of different things. We're, we're going to get into the radioactive sources a little bit and at least identify them on a couple of slides and talk about them so you at least have familiarity with them. And then we'll talk about some of the basic process um, related items with radiography.
tests. Here's some basics of a radiography testing. The part is placed between the radiation source and a piece of film. Part absorbs some radiation. Thicker and more dense areas will stop more of the radiation. So if you had a chunk of tungsten in there, which is really dense, it would absorb a lot of radiation. Radiographic equipment includes portable or mobile systems, laboratory systems, and large fixed installations. There are electronic controls that can provide automatic exposures. Automatic film development is common. The selection of equipment, materials, and facilities available is extensive. In selecting x-ray equipment, one of the most important factors to be considered is the maximum thickness and type of material to be examined. The material and its thickness is will essentially dictate the necessary peak voltage rating of the equipment. X-ray equipment must be especially designed to operate at the low kilovolt range, especially a beryllium window is, is included to allow the long wavelengths to exit the X-ray tube and expose the specimen. When equipment is designed to operate at the high voltage range, it is difficult to provide adequate heat sinks and radiation protection is usually massive and expensive. Because of these factors, the same equipment is not normally used for all voltage ranges. The principles of X-ray generation is illustrated in figure 11.3. Heat and X-rays are generated. Here's the basics for X-ray equipment. You've got a control panel, and then you've got the power and the cooling unit, and then you've got the X-ray transformer which is going to generate your x-rays. This is the basic theory for, you know, x-raying your teeth or shooting an x-ray on your leg. You notice they've got a control panel in another room while they've got you up on the table and they're shooting the x-ray on your leg. And then there's a power and a cooling unit and that's all wired together. But this is the basics of how x-rays are generated. The diagram in figure 11.4 illustrates the fundamentals of radiographic exposure and the setup of the film, specimen, and radiation source. Note that the film assembly is placed as close as possible to the test specimen, while the x-ray source is some distance away. A definite space ratio must be maintained between the specimen and the x-ray source if a satisfactory radiograph is to be obtained. In this slide, you can see the relationship between voltage ratings and application. So, 50 kilovolts, radiography of wood, plastics, non-metallic components, textiles, leather, diffraction, and micro radiography. 100 kilovolts, radiography of light metals and alloys, fluoroscopy of foodstuffs, plastic parts and assemblies, and small light alloy castings. 150 kilovolts volts, radiography of heavy sections of light metals and alloys and thin sections of steel or copper alloys. Um, 250 kilovolts, it's the radiography of heavier sections of steel or copper. F fluoroscopy is not generally used at this voltage. And then you have 1,000 to 2,000 kilovolt radio kilovolts and then radioactive isotopes. So radiography of very heavy ferrous and non-ferrous sections, three inches of steel or greater. This is a penetrometer for one inch material. Um, image quality indicators, an IQI, a penetrometer, also called a penny, is a device used to determine from the appearance of its image in a radiograph the overall quality of that radiograph. So you set this thing on the film, and then when you, after the radiography is done and you've developed the film, you need to see certain sized holes. You see how there's a 1T, a 2T, and a 4T? Depending on what your standard is, it'll tell you what um, 
you need to have as far as quality for that radiograph. So 4T, if you shoot it to a 4T, it's not a very um, uh, quality radiograph in comparison to the 1T. If you can shoot the radiograph and you can shoot it to 1T, I guess you're doing pretty good. So, but anyways, this is how they tell how well they shot a radiograph. It's an image quality indicator, also known as a penetrometer. And I, the Europeans use a, dis, a different system. They've got a different style, but this is the ones used in the U.S. and North America. Shim stock. Shim stock for radiographic testing may be defined as thin pieces of material identical to the test item material. They are used in radiography of welds, etc., where the area of radiographic interest is thicker than the test item thickness. Shims are selected so that the thickness of the shim equals the thickness added to the test item by the weld in the area of interest. The shim is placed underneath the penetrometer between the penetrometer and the test item. In this way, the image of the penetrometer is projected through a thickness of material equal to the thickness of the area of interest. In this case, it's the weld. In use, the length and width of the shim should always be greater than the similar dimensions of the penetrometer as indicated in figure 536. So all you're doing with a shim is you're taking a piece of the same material that you're x-raying. So if we're shooting carbon steel, you'd have a carbon steel shim. And you're just making the base material as thick as the thickest part of the weld so that your penetrometer will give you the right image quality. And that's what we do with a shim stock. Summary. In this module, we covered RT theory, radiographic testing theory, basic principles of radiographic testing, x-ray equipment, and what a shim stock is.